democracy in Vermont is in danger and it's jeopardized, and I'll tell you why. Um, there is this heavy emphasis on town meeting day, which ought to be respected. And there's a great tradition there about town meeting day. And there's this, this focus on the democracy surrounding town meeting day. The problem is, is that how voter information is presented to voters in Vermont, especially at the local level, is really substandard. It's very substandard. Can I illustrate an example? Yeah, yeah. So, democracy, metaphorically, in Vermont is kind of like Mexican food. And let me explain, explain that, all right? Don't get me wrong, the Mexican restaurants here try, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you have been in Vermont all your life and you've eaten Mexican food in Vermont, Right? Yeah. You might be thinking, this is the best Mexican food ever. But unless you've gone out to East LA, where I'm from, where I was born and raised, right? You don't know any better. And if you go to Los Angeles or Mexico or somewhere else, and suddenly you experience authentic Mexican food, you realize what you've been missing out on. When it comes to democracy here in Vermont, unless you have experienced democracy elsewhere, and to see how better it could be, you won't know. And a lot of people here don't know how much better democracy could be here. Specifically at the local level, let me draw a contrast. Here there are ballot measures and there's uh, the ballot information is published in a warning. Yep. And information is put out there on simple warnings they're called here. The problem here is that a lot of the information that's disseminated to voters here by the municipalities, including right here in the city of Burlington, it lacks complete explanation. And in California, what they do in California, for instance, is the voter guides that are published by the state, by the government, by the local government and the state government, whenever there is a ballot measure that is presented to the voters, each side of the issue is given about 150 words to write a pro and a con. In addition to that pro-con opportunity for the public to participate in, there is an independent analyst who explains in a summary what the proposed ballot measure is. And in addition to that independent analyst who provides a summary of what the ballot measure is, there's also a fiscal impact analysis by an independent fiscal analyst who will say, this is, the, this is the significance of this fiscally, if there be one, right? So in California, with every voter information pamphlet that is sent out and paid for by taxpayers, there is a great service to the community, right? Because it transparently informs pro, con, there's a paid independent analyst that says neutrally what the ballot measure is, as well as the fiscal impact. Here in Vermont, there's, there's nothing like that. And so when information, when a ballot measure is proposed, people struggle and people think that they're voting on something they probably don't know about. That is, it's interesting to hear that, that story because here what you have is basically the city is proposing charter changes or ballot measures and then they write a summary and it's always very much in favor or or um, uh, paints what they want in the best possible light it's not clear and and you definitely don't understand what the fiscal impact is going to be i'm going to interrupt you to give you a concrete example this is a great point erica this yeah. is a really great point last year on the march 2nd ballot right there was this carbon tax proposed now in the summary it said nothing about a carbon tax it said nothing at all yeah. right and there was really no explanation of what this measure was yeah. in california right voters here would have seen a pro and a con and then there would have been an independent analyst who would have given a summary of what 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 it was here in burlington there was nothing now i sued the city yeah. I sued the city over this, and ultimately, my lawsuit was decided by the state Supreme Court. And sadly, our state Supreme Court held the following. The state Supreme Court acknowledged 
that the city of Burlington had violated voter law. And they violated voter law here in the city of Burlington by not informing voters that the actual ballot text was left off the ballot. And by law here in Vermont, the city was supposed to inform voters that information was left off the ballot, the actual text that they were voting on was left off, and they were supposed to inform voters where to find that information, right? The city didn't do that. So the state Supreme Court said, well, yeah, that was a violation, but there was a summary, and that's good enough. No, that's not good enough. That is not good enough. Voters here deserve better. It's a problem. Yes. Democracy is in jeopardy here in, in Vermont. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, at the local level especially, yeah. there's a lack of accountability for local elected officials. People violate open meeting laws all the time here. If you look at the statutory framework for violations of open meeting laws and the like, it's a wet noodle, right? There's just, there's no real teeth to hold people accountable. Go to a place like California, there are some very stiff penalties, very, very stiff penalties for local elected officials. I used to be a city council member in California, right? You, you watch your step there. You watch your step there because if you misstep, there's something called the Brown Act there that you will be held heavily accountable if you violate open meeting law. Here, there's nothing like that. There's actually, my understanding is elected officials here, even if they do something bad or whatever, there's very little you can do, whether it's violating election law or town meeting law or any of that kind of stuff. Like sovereign immunity basically protects them. From you're absolutely right. I mean, the open meeting laws are, you're either going to do one of two things. You're going to file a complaint with the secretary of state or you're going to go to court, right? And first of all, the secretary of state's office does little to enforce violations of open meeting laws. Second of all, the, the penalty is laughable. Yeah. It, it's laughable. It's like, it's like getting a $3 parking ticket somewhere. It's ridiculous, right? And otherwise, people have to resort to the court. And most people aren't going to resort to the court because they don't have the money to do so. And they can't, oftentimes, they can't even defend themselves because things are written in such a way so as to make it almost impossible for a lay person to figure out what to do. Absolutely. And then when you do resort to the court, I'm an attorney. I resorted to the court. I filed my own lawsuit against the city for violating voter law, right? And ultimately, despite clear violations and despite those violations being acknowledged by the state Supreme Court, it didn't matter. The state Supreme Court opinion essentially said this, Erica, the message to local municipalities is that you can violate state voter law. You can violate it and we're not gonna do anything. So what would you say if you, uh, to, to just, if you wanted to give a message or a warning to Vermonters, what would you say to them? Go to East LA and try the Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, seriously, you know, really, this is, a, there's a need for systemic change. Yeah. This is a systemic problem here in Vermont. Yeah. People like to use that word with regard to racism and other things. Not going to go there with this, but this is a statewide problem. Yeah. This is a statewide problem. There is a need for legislative change. And the only way we're going to get those legislative changes made is if we communicate our dissatisfaction of the status quo to our elected officials and impress upon them that these things as they stand are not okay yeah. and change needs to happen and if those elected officials will not introduce that change then we need to elect new new people who will yeah. Amen. Well, dear, well,